Hey, sorry, I'm really behind in my to-do list. I don't even know what I'm doing. I purchased a print from an artist a couple of years ago. I was looking for something really beautiful, relaxing, abstract for above my desk that I would look at every now and then and just feel like, ah. And I didn't really know what I was looking for, but I just kind of had it in the back of my mind and browsed occasionally. and eventually came across this artist on Etsy and ordered and I don't even know that I like narrowed down the shops to you know just Australian or anything like that but it arrived and I love it even though at some point James told me that he could see the shape of a bird in there and now I always look at it and I see a bird but anyway that's all right birds are I guess they're okay um but Recently I've been following more illustrators and more artists and stuff on social media and you know one thing leads to another you've like stumbled onto this and then you've stumbled onto this Etsy store and then you've stumbled onto this and whatever and I found my way back to the artist um, so the store name is Amiki and then I saw oh they actually have another store where they sell stuff that they make f more for kids and then I found out their name, which is Simone Downey, and I saw they're actually from Melbourne, which is like super cool. So I wanted to mention her because I love her Amiki store, her Amiki line of, of work, all the abstract work. I have also used one of her artworks as my home screen on my phone because it's just so chill and beautiful to look at. I saw this thing a little while back about a vending machine in Sydney that had been created as like an art installation and it was doling out sort of existential slash philosophical advice and it was all like underpinned by the topic of mental health even though that I don't think that was like forefront on it, it was more like put in two dollars and we'll give you advice on one of these topics and I'll put up the topics up here because I haven't memorized them but it was apparently really successful loads of people putting in their money to receive some philosophical sort of advice or even sort of you know a piece a little piece of art that spoke to them and they were, the makers of it were worried that it was going to completely run out of slips because they stocked it up with like 200 slips every day, 200 little parcels um, for all of the topics in there. And way before the end of the day, it was getting sold out. So lots of people were coming up to it frustrated in the afternoon, the evening and not being able to get one. And then they had to take it onto another art set festival. They were worried that they were actually going to run out and they wouldn't be able to get more pa little packages printed in time. So I hope that that all worked out for them. And I just, I not only thought it was a really cool idea, but I love how it showed that people want things like that. Like they want, they want a vending machine that they come across that doles out sort of, meaningful advice that's you know underpinned by stuff about mental health they they want to learn they want experiments they want art in their world they want um silliness they want to be communicated with and when i see something like that that's um successful it gives me hope of the sort of the things that i want to work on and make and do i feel like you know, they're not pointless trying to pursue these things that they are enjoyed and desired by people. I can't remember how it came about, but about a week ago maybe, I think it was from me talking about the idea of ladies drawing nights and sort of being bummed that I couldn't really figure out how to do that in Melbourne. I don't really have the social circle necessarily that can facilitate that and then the people that I do know that would be into that are either far away or you know it just be really hard trying to get it to work so while I would really like a weekly or fortnightly or monthly catch up with some women where we 
made stuff together, like drew or painted or whatever, I had some wine and had a chat, I was frustrated that I didn't think that I'd be able to make that happen. And our friend Peggy had messaged me on Instagram and she just said, how would you be for like a sort of online collaboration, like an online art club? And I was like, ha ha, like I've actually thought about starting an art club before. When I did Girls Club, and I called it Girl, Girls Club XO, I actually registered Art Club XO and Argument Club XO at the same time because I really wanted to start an art club where you got together with people and at that time I was thinking more about art inspo so like everyone would go to um, a particular exhibition on a Saturday together and you know now I would change it so that it actually had like sketching involved or um, actual art as well but even like little art inspo adventures is be really nice to do with that with some like-minded people and then argument club was born out of a frustration that society doesn't really understand how to do arguments well and I had read this little piece of information in a um, Gretchen Rubin book about how to fight right and then she just had a few dot points and they like massively changed the way that I approached arguments and made arguments way more healthy and like successful like instead of just being this horrible thing being like this healthy thing that went somewhere healthy and I would call that successful sort of arguments so argument club was going to be about that about arguing with people but using the rules of how to fight right and anyway so Peggy messaged me and she was like how do you feel about an art club online and I was like okay and then the other really funny thing was I'm sorry I'm digressing so much but bear with me I had been thinking again about starting up my own little like something or other online where I could make and sell something or other you know details not to be divulged but anyway um and I had been thinking about uh, reviving an old name like of projects I've done in the past because I did that for Monaco video with you and I've really enjoyed doing that because I always really liked the term and then now we're like repurposing and so I was like I came I was going to do my favorite old word which I think you know what it is and I think I'm still going to use that but another one I considered was Jupiter Boating or Jupiter Boating Services which was an online magazine I made with some friends way back when and so Peggy messages me and she goes um so I've set it all up and she set up an Instagram account called Jupiter Boating just like she had never spoken to me about how I was reconsidering these old names it just like came to her as well and she's made the rules for it so it's going to be once a month there's going to be a challenge and you have to actually get it in the mail <laughs> so of course just her and I are participating in the first one so I will actually send mine to her and she will send hers to me and we'll both, we've both got the password for the account so we'll both upload it but if you ever wanted to join in so this month's challenge for April is postcard size and the phrase alive so you can interpret that however you want you can use whatever medium you want it just has to be a postcard that I send to Peggy with that topic and that will be our first mini challenge and that will be our little art club so I thought that was interesting slash cool she just did it like bam 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 she just came up with an idea like forgive me if this doesn't really sound like a interesting thing but it's been something that I've been thinking about over the past few weeks because I've, I was feeling so tired and probably sick, um, but it wasn't like a strong enough sick to actually be like, oh, I'm sick. It was just like this background kind of the I was thinking about how I wasn't very motivated and how I had let some things slide that I had been doing basically every day and really enjoying and felt like I was getting somewhere with them and the main one was art journaling. I had just been enjoyed making things in my art journal since Gen 1 and I had been so pleased with the results 
and I just hadn't done anything in it for a while but there were other things as well just all these things that I was kind of letting slide I think that I was some kind of sick and that I needed to get over that but I was also thinking about how sometimes the smallest barrier can stop you from doing something and how important it is to recognize any barriers that are stopping you from doing anything that you think that you want to do. Like I have a lot of things in my life that have barriers like you know I want to I've spoken about it so many times but I want to change things in the house but there's like sort of steps before steps before steps before steps that you have to do and the first one might be something like getting a quote for a thing that needs to be done before four other things can be gotten quotes for and you're just like I don't even know how to google the person that would do a quote for that and so it's like this it's actually quite a big kind of barrier because it's like not your knowledge slash skill area but regarding these things that I do want to do and I have been really enjoying doing and I feel like I'm growing as a person and growing my skills because of them, like the art journal, when something like that stops, I'm like, well, hang on, what's going on here? And when I had a little think about it, it's because I've I've only got pages left in the book. This will sound so stupid, but it's because I've only got pages left in the book to fill in that already have something showing through on the other side. So all it means is that I need to get other paper that I can then stick in. I think I've got an example. So like the shoes one that I did, that was on another piece of paper and then I just stuck it into the book. And there was something showing through on that side. So now it just covers it. So that's all I need to do. And you can see all the yellow tabs are all the pages that I've still got to finish. So there's still like six kind of pages that I have to finish. And then I can abandon this book, which was never really meant to be an art book anyway, like the paper quality. And then I can start on a book which I've got, which is much better paper where stuff won't show through to the other side. And then I won't, like I'm avoiding that barrier for that book then. But I don't want to like move on and leave like blank pages in here and always be thinking like, oh, I should put something on those pages or whatever. And I have ideas for them and everything. So all I need to do is I need to find another pad and I need to put the piece of paper in this book so that it's all ready to go. And then I can fill in those pages. And I'm gonna do that today, <laughs> the end. But there were a few other things that were like that, that I was just like, when I had gotten over my vague fatigue sickness, um, and I stopped to think about them, I was like, oh, there's like this small, small barrier that is stopping me from just doing that thing. And now I've recognized what it is. And isn't it funny how it can be something so small? And we're just like, oh, I haven't done anything in my art journal for three weeks. And that's the thing that was like my key thing I wanted to do this year. I wanted to do something basically every day in that book. And as my three-year-old would say, Daffa Mama. You can you can say that to me as well. You know, you just call me Daffa or anything. Did you mention you were going to the gym? What have you become? I love you, bye. I love you, bye. I love you, bye. I love you, bye. Love you, bye. I love you, bye. Disco curtains, bye. Balloons, bye. We had a party, bye, bye, bye. Sky is now, two, two, two. Bye, 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 bye.